Hey guys, welcome back. Um, today I'm going to do an unboxing for my new toy, so to speak. Uh, in front of you, we have the Corsair K65 um, RGB Rapid Fire Keyboard and the Razer Basilisk, which is a very new mouse. It was released uh, just last month. And um, so I'm actually very excited to try these out, uh, finally unbox them. Uh, I actually picked them up physically. I went to a store, I paid for them, and then I brought them back home. But I couldn't, I didn't have time to do the unboxing. So now I'm doing it. I'm very excited. I can't wait. So let's get to it. Now, in this video, I'm going to unbox the K65 first, and I'll save the Razer Basilisk, Basilisk for the next video. Now, the reason why I'm so excited about the K65 is because, A, I have never tried out a, well, I've never used a tankiless keyboard. I never owned one. Uh, let alone a mechanical tanky this keyboard. And secondly, I've never tried out uh, any sort of gaming oriented keys, which is like the Cherry MX Red or this one right here, the Cherry MX Speed Silver. Now, the real difference between gaming keys, which is and you know non gaming typing keys, which is, is that these gaming um, keys, which is they feature no uh, tactile feedback. For the most part, they have a linear key travel and so things like the Cherry Mix Red, Cherry Mix Black, or this Speed Silver, they're all gaming key switches. But for things like Cherry Mix Blue, or Cherry Mix Brown, or Razer Green, they all have a tactile feedback, and those key switches are more designed towards uh, typing. And of course, that, ty that typing experience is uh, very awesome, but for gamers, they probably don't want that kind of actu actuation or tactile feedback that will interrupt how they feel. You know, they, they may maybe they have to do a lot of fast movements, or tap the keys a lot, so in that case, that tactile feedback may be a little bit uh, annoying. But before I actually do the unboxing, let's take a look at the box and see what it has for itself. So, dribble aluminium frame or aluminum, you know. Of course, it has had has always used this kind of design for all of this uh, K series keyboards, and people love that sort of build quality. Dynamic per key backlighting, so you can actually use a software to change uh, what the light would be on for each of these keys and ultra fast mechanical key switches which refers to of course the cherry amps speed silver switches i'm just going to call them silver switches from now on uh, what's so special about them is that not only they do they have a linear key travel but they also have a very short actuation distance at 1.2 millimeters compared to other switches which has uh, usually two millimeters it supports this um what's it called Q-Link, Q-Link synchronized cross device lighting. So if you have other Crosshair products, you can synchronize the light settings on them. I'm very excited to try it out with my Corsair um, MM300 um, mouse pad. I'm sure the result will be absolutely spectacular. I can't wait to test that out. And it also comes with a palm rest right here. Detachable too. Flip around the box and you see a lot of text that nobody really wants to read about. So let's get this box open. So inside this box we have a brown box. go. So right off the bat, we have the warranty thing, I'm assuming. A set of guide, oh, warranty guide, there you go. I'm totally not gonna read that, like, who wants to read all that kind of things, really? That is so boring. And it looks like we have some extra keycaps, so I'm assuming these are WASD, WASD, and then we have, uh, I think, Q, E, D, W, F and R. So you've got a bunch of um, replacement keycaps. Um, they have different colors. Well, they're in gray compared to the default black keys on the keyboard, and they're textured, texturized. And then you have this tool, which allows you to pull out the keycaps. Um, of course, you can just pull them out by your hands, but if you do so, you might apply pressure unevenly, and that might damage the key switches. So always use this um, keycap removal tool. So now we have the keyboard kind of lodged inside the box. 
Wow, the cable is actually tucked, like, tucked really, it's locked in pretty tightly. And the cable is absolutely chunky. Look at this. Oh my god. Okay. Okay, let's not destroy everything. Like, this cable is really, really freaking chunk chunky. Let's try to undo the zip. The twist time, I should say. Oh my god. Why is this cable so thick? And it comes with um, two USB connectors. I don't know why this cable needs two of them. And they look really chunky too. Like, I've never seen this kind of design. I like it. And I'm assuming this gray part is there for stress relief. But with a cable this thick, I do think stress relief would be a big problem. What else is in the box? So this is the palm rest. Nice. It is also texturized. As you can see, it's got these uh, black dots on it. Nice. And here you can see the notches that will allow you to uh, snap it onto the keyboard. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this one though. I guess I'll see. Let's check out the keyboard itself. The K65. Look how small this key this keyboard is. I mean, check this out. Right, check this out. Hold on. So here, this is my Ducky Shine Three full sized keyboard. You can really see how much space this number pack takes up, like compared to the ten keyless keyboard. And this is part of the reason why I want to switch to a ten keyless keyboard, like the K sixty five, because um, you know the number pad. It is cool. I mean, it's useful, but um, because of the number pad, I can't really center the keyboard uh, like in front of me. So when I'm typing, I have to move my right arm just like that. And that's not very comfortable for typing. And of course, because the number pad is here, I can't put my mouse uh, near to the keyboard. So that's also a problem. So that's why I went with the K65, which is a tankiest keyboard. Anyway, back to the K65. That's the Corsair logo. I'm pretty sure this is the old logo. I'm pretty sure Corsair had a like a gamer kind of logo before, but I don't know why it's not on this keyboard. Maybe this keyboard is really that old, so that's why it doesn't have the logo. Up top, on the top right corner, we can see some media keys. So this one is for brightness, mute, volume down, volume up, and then we have a Windows Store button. Who actually uses Windows Windows Store though? Like, let me know in the comment section. I've never used it. And then we have two indicator lights. I don't know what these are for. I guess that's why I should have read the instruction book, right? Okay, so another key feature about this keyboard is that it has a an open board design. So as you can see, the key switches are exposed. This means uh, cleaning up the keyboard will be a lot easier. Uh, you don't need to remove all the keycaps just to remove these uh, hidden spaces. Uh, you can just take, I guess, like an, a vacuum cleaner and just suck out all the dust. That'd be very useful. And of course, because these switches are all RGB switches, the lights will also come out from the sides. So this keyboard will end up looking absolutely fabulous when it is turned on. Very solid construction. I can't twist it at all. So. The aluminium frame is doing a great job. Turn around and you can see the, the feet. They flip up sideways, which is kind of special. And then at the bottom, we can see some, uh, like the place where you can attach the, 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 the palm, palm rest. So let's try the palm rest. Snap zone, just like that. But palm rest doesn't actually stay put. Like you can't flip up and down, which is not a big problem when you put it back onto the table. 
So I just want to kind of try out the keys, um, you know, give you a sort of idea of how good the quality is on this keyboard. So uh, I don't know, let's try space. Space bar feels pretty even, so that's great because if you play a lot of, a lot of um, you know, first person shooters, you'll be pressing the space bar like this and of course you don't want the space bar to be to have like a different sort of feeling across the key. WSD's keys are of course very easy to get to and type, type on. So let's switch over to maybe this shift key. It does move a little bit, but that is totally normal for Cherry MX switches. But I do think for normal use, you, would, you, you actually notice it. I do think that um, the fonts are a little bit too big. So um, this kind of reminds me of uh, one of those old people phones. You know, they have these giant uh, buttons with giant tags. Uh, but you know, keycaps are just a small problem. You, know, you can just buy third party keycaps and replace them with your gold or silver keycaps, whatever. So you do have the options right there. So now I'm going to try to plug in the keyboard and see what it looks like when it turns on. And um, of course there are two USB connectors, so I'm just going to try out one of them. I'm assuming either one would work. I'm guessing anyway. <laughs> Okay, nothing comes up. I guess I'm trying the other one. And there we go. All lit up. Let's turn off the light and show you what it looks like. This keyboard is lit, bro. It's so lit, it's so fire, bro. So there you can see the key switches being exposed and that's why you can see the lights like this keyboard will get super lit up because you know you don't have anything to cover up the lights the light source and the light is like right there if you can see the, this yellow part and it just kind of light up the entire key switch now the keyboard is in it like it's got red and white but of course you can change them out uh, with the software, I haven't installed it yet, and of course the media keys are also lit up. You can't really see from the camera, but um, like these buttons are also actually red, unlike whatever this color the camera is picking up. It looks kind of yellow, but it's actually red. And I'm not sure if I can change the colors on these. I would hope I can. So now I want to do a typing slash sound test. Um, in front of you, we have the Cooler Master CM Storm Trigger, I think. This is a full-size keyboard with Cherry MX Black key switches. Um, I don't really like Cherry MX Black because I do feel there's a lot of resistance to the keys. And uh, I don't, I'm not sure if it's the problem with the key switches themselves or with the keyboard. Um, there's actually a lot of ping. Like, you might be able to hear, hear this sort of like ping sound as I deliberately do this kind of weird press. It's not very pleasant. For normal typing, you can't really hear it. Anyway, let's try it. I'm not a fast typer though, so, you know, this is just a sound test, not really a oh, how fast can you type sort of test. Okay. A lot of pain, a lot of resistance, um, but if you don't bottom up the keys, um, this cherry, cherry Mix Black is still fine, so there we go. So next up, we have the Ducky Shine 3 with the Cherry MX Brown key switches. This keyboard is not built like a tank, uh, unlike the CM Storm Trigger. It does creak a little bit more, um, because maybe this keyboard is a little bit more plasticky, but it's also not as thick. But anyway, the typing experience feels a lot better uh, and it's not just about the key switches 
uh, I do feel that the keys are a little bit more stable. And of course, you know, this keyboard is using Cherry Mix Brown and I love Cherry Mix Brown. It's like a middle ground between gaming key switches and typing key switches. It's still got tactile feedback, but it doesn't have the clickiness of the Cherry Mix Blue. So anyway, let's do the sound test. Ducky Shine 3 with Cherry Mix Brown. I definitely prefer the typing feeling of the Cherry Mix Brown and uh, I'm excited to see how this compares to the MX Silver key, Speed Silver Key Switch. So finally we have the Corsair K65. Now um, the Ducky Shine 3 was my previous daily driver so I'm quite used to that keyboard. However this is a new keyboard, uh, I don't have much experience with it, in fact I just unboxed it just now so uh, I'm not sure how I would feel about um, typing on this keyboard, but I guess we'll see now. Now, before I actually do the typing test, I also want to mention that uh, one important thing is that this keyboard doesn't have detachable cable. And um, yeah, so if the cable breaks, which is unlikely, this keyboard is most likely dead. So anyway, let's start the, uh, the sound test. So I'm not sure why, but I feel like I'm not like quite used to the keyboard layout yet, even though the layout is still the same. So uh, I guess I would still have to investigate that uh, for a little bit longer. But one thing I would say about the palm rest is that I don't think this palm rest is that great for me. Um, because my table is not uh, necessarily flat, um, it's actually curved a little bit downwards. So um, this part is not, like it's not stable, right? So as I am pressed down, uh, the palm rest we can't move up and down, so I'm not a, too big of a fan for that. So I think I'm just going to detach the, the palm rest, and I guess I can do it now to showcase how easy it is to remove the palm rest. So just do this. Squeeze it. And there we go. The palm rest is off. So I was wondering why typing on the K65 felt a little bit weird compared to my Ducky Shine 3. Well, as it turns out, if I try to align the keyboard, the main keyboard area, you know, just like that, and I move to the other side. Well, as it turns out, the K65 actually has a, a, a narrower keyboard area compared to the Ducky Shine 3. It is not a huge difference, but it is noticeable. It's like a fourth of a key width, basically, or even one third. So maybe that's why I found that uh, the K65 felt a little bit strange under my hands, but I'm sure as time goes on, I will be more familiar with the keyboard layout and I will eventually be able to fully unlock the potential of the K65 now. Once again, I have another full-size keyboard for comparison. Below is the CM Storm trigger, and as you can see, I've aligned to these two keyboards main typing area and once again the K65 is shown to be a little bit narrower compared to the full size keyboard. So this is not a situation limited to uh, the Ducky Shine 3 um, you know so the problem is kind of kind of on the K65 but I, like I've said before I've never used a 10 keyless key keyboard before so maybe this is common. So um, that's it for the uh, Corsair K65 first look and unboxing. Uh, I don't think I'll be doing a review of this keyboard, but um, I will definitely be doing an unboxing for my, of course, the Razer Basilisk. So stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching.